I'm going to be talking about three films. Um, basically, they all had very similar premises um, that we had last year released. We got had Budfest, Hellfest, and American Fright Fest, um, which is not to be confused with the uh, obviously the UK Film Festival. Um, all very similar plots and basically all based around scare parks and then um, of, um, varying degrees of quality, I think it's safe to say. Um, Bloodfest um, kind of focuses more on, it seems like almost like a star vehicle um, for the, the lead who's played by Robbie Kay, who's basically um, a kid whose you know, family are not too keen on horror films and he basically kind of goes against the, the will of his father to this, this scare park and it all kind of... It's very elaborate in terms of, um, it's probably, you know, um, obviously this video is going to have spoilers in it. Um, it's probably got the highest body count of them all because it literally attracts thousands and thousands of people um, uh, who pretty much get slaughtered, um, barring these these few um, of his friends and, and himself, basically. And it all turns into this ruse that's basically um, his dad basically stopping him wanting to... Um, get into horror he's a bit of a horror nut and um, it turns out the way to not even get, get him into horror is to kill thousands of people didn't really kind of kind of get it but there you go uh, it also stars a uh, jacob balaton who also starred uh, in spider-man homecoming uh, he was uh, peter parker's sidekick who was uh, he was quite good he was the uh, the guy with the he I think he bought he built the lego death star i think i think i remember right that got broken in quite a funny scene um and he you know adequate backup i think uh, but again, it's more about the more focus on K. The you know he I think he played a role in there once upon a time for about four or five seasons as the Pied Piper, and um, basically I think this film was meant to, for him to kind of break out from that sort of uh, that sort of role and you know go into new areas and you know horror is always a good good way to start um, start a career as you know someone like Jamie Lee Curtis will tell you. Um, American Fright Fest probably the weakest of the bunch. Um, basically. Um, if, you know, a scare, park, a scare park that's basically been reopened to basically be a reintroduction to the genre to, to a basically a, a director who had a few hits a few years ago and has basically become a cork snort, a c coke snorting drunk. Uh, yeah, if, if that's the, yeah, if I can word it right. Um, and basically, yeah, uh, teenagers who are fairly likable um, go into the screen park, but at the same time, um, he crashes an asylum bus which basically breaks out a few criminals and one of them turns out to be a bit of a fruit loop who likes to um to wear masks as well um and then it turns to another another of the the lunatics who basically kills his mother and father in the first reel to try and come and save them so it's kind of a you know the the friend of my the enemy of my enemy is, is my friend is that i think that's the right term um it's it's very bizarre very disjointed and you know it, 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 it premiered at Fright Fest, ironically, in, in England last year, and it didn't really make much waves, and it's kind of disappeared into the ether since, and I can kind of see why. Um, whereas Hellfest, um, which hasn't had a, a proper UK release yet, which is a, a real shame, actually, um, it came out uh, around September, I believe, in America last year, it starred Tony Todd, and uh, well, it was more of a cameo from Tony Todd, although it was promoted like he was in the film a bit more. Um, Again, kids who, who are going to Hellfest, um, basically, and it's you know it's it's kind of this it's it's a bit more twenty first century realized, and basically, uh, what happens is, is is that somebody sneaks in, takes over as one of the actors as such, and basically starts killing the kids off in quite creative ways, and that's the one thing that uh, Hellfest does have over these films is that the kills are very creative, and um, it's a real you know. It's a good ride. You know, there's a couple of moments of real tension where you think things are going to happen, then then they kind of delay it, and that kind of you know that one of them slash trips that we all kind of enjoy. Um, and also, um, compared to the others that kind of they, they fizzle out, Hellfest has a really good ending in, in terms of even if you think the film has been fairly distinctly average up until that point, the, the ending will kind of twist it for you and possibly you know make you think that's it. It's better than some of its parts basically, and it leaves it open to say, oh, this is franchise material. Unfortunately, it didn't do very well at the uh, the box office. And again, like I said, I don't think worldwide it was really given the exposure that it probably merited. Um, so in turn, it doesn't look like well, I've, well, I would probably get a Hellfest too unless it's a fairly straight to video affair, which could be a you know a fairly low brow effort to say the least. But um, of of these um, of these fest films, as we'll call them, uh, that's certainly the strongest. So we'd probably go American Fright Fest, Bloodfest, and then Hellfest. 
and hopefully Hellfest will get a UK release and everyone can kind of see what we're talking about um, soon. Uh, so yeah, let me know which one you think is your favourite. Uh, comment below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.